In this video, we're going to look at two more examples working with the Taylor remainder theorem. So here I'm told I have um, the square root of x approximated by the following quadratic function um, on the interval from 4 to 4.2, and we want to use the remainder term to find a bound on the error in the approximation on that given interval. Okay, so notice that this approximation here is p2 of x, so I'm trying to um, get a bound then on r2 of x. Okay, so we know then that our r2 of x will be less than or equal to um, some bound m times x minus 4. So this is this was p2 of x here. This is centered at a equals 4 because I've got those x minus 4s in there. So I've got x minus 4 cubed all over 3 factorial where my um, third derivative here at c would be less than or equal to m for all c between um, 4, which is my a value, and x. Okay, so I need to find the third derivative. So I know that f of x is equal to root x, f prime of x is 1 half x to the negative 1 half, the second derivative is negative 1 fourth x to the, whoops, negative, um, three halves, and then our third derivative is negative three eighths x to the negative five halves. Okay, so I have that third derivative. So I want to get a bound on that third derivative when I'm in this interval from four to 4.2. Okay, so specifically in this case, for all values between four and 4.2, okay. So notice that for x between 4 and 4.2, um, my third derivative here would be a decreasing function over that interval. So this negative 3 over 8x to the 5 halves. Oops, I made a mistake over here. This was going to be negative. This is actually going to be a positive 3 eighths. Um, but this positive 3 over 8x to the 3 halves is a decreasing function. So the maximum value that that function could be is going to occur at the smaller value in that interval. Um, so let's just notice that if um, 4 is less than or equal to x, that means that um, 4 to the 5 halves is less than or equal to x to the 5 halves. And so 8 times 4 to the 5 halves is less than or equal to 8 times x to the 5 halves here. And if I take the reciprocal of both sides, I have this 1 over 8 times 4 to the 5 halves is bigger than 1 over 8x to the 5 halves. So if we multiply both sides of this here by 3, I have 3 over 8 times 4 to the 5 halves um, is bigger than 3 over 8x to the 5 halves, which is my third derivative at x. So I can see that the third derivative at x is then bounded by this particular number um, on this interval between um, 4 and 4.2. So I can say that my third derivative here um, is less than or equal to this 3 over 8 times 4 to the 5 halves, um, which I can actually evaluate this 5 halves um, root of 4. Um, that would be 2 to the 5th, or 32, so times 8, I'm going to have 3 over 256. So I can use that for my m value, okay? So we can say that our r2 of x, then, is less than or equal to 3 over 256. And actually, I could really use anything um, that's bigger than that as well. If I wanted to get um, a less close bound, I could just use m equals 1 here because that's bigger than 3 over 256. But I'm going to go ahead and try to get a little bit more um, precise error bound. Um, so I have that number there times x minus 4 to the third power all over 3 factorial. Remember, we're looking for this bound in the interval where x is between 4 and 4.2. So if x is less than or equal to 4.2, x minus 4 is then less than or equal to just 0.2. So subtracting 4 from both sides, x minus 4 is less than or equal to 4.2 minus 4. So I can say that I have this bound of 3 times uh, over 256 um, times 0.2 cubed over 3 factorial, which comes out to about 
0 0.00001562. So that gives us our error bound um, for this particular example. Now we said we were going to look at one final one, so let's look at the following. Here we want to know what is the minimum order of Taylor polynomial required to approximate e to the negative 0.5 with an absolute error of no greater than 10 to the negative 3. So this is instead of saying I have a certain number of terms and I want to know the error bound, this is asking me how many terms do I need to get this particular error. So this is the same kind of question that we've answered um, when dealing with the alternating series test, for example. So here we're going to be using, whoops, we're going to be using the function y equals e to the x, and we're trying to approximate it by a polynomial centered at a equals zero. Okay, so my idea here is if I'm interested in trying to do this approximation of e to the negative 0.5, I'll do an approximation of e to the x centered at a equals zero because that's close to negative 0.5 and then I could plug negative 0.5 into my approximation to get an approximation of um, e to the negative 0.5. So approximating this by a polynomial centered at zero. Um, what's nice here is that I know that the nth derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x for all n. So when I'm talking about my n plus one derivative, that's always um, e to the x. Okay, so I have here that my n plus 1th derivative at c is less than or equal to m. I want to find m here so that the n plus 1th derivative at c is less than or equal to m for all c between, okay, we know in general it would be between a and x. Here I'm going to choose between 0, that's where I'm going to be centering it, and this number I'm going to be plugging in, a negative point. Five. Okay, so for x, then I'm just going to switch notation here from c to x now that I have a, a particular value plugged in for x. So for negative one half less than or equal to x less than or equal to zero, the n plus one-th derivative of x in absolute value, which is equal to e to the x, is less than or equal to what? Well, if we think about our e to the x curve, this is y equals e to the x. Um, I've got my values x between negative a half and zero. Where is the bigger value going to occur over that interval? Well, it's going to occur at zero. So e to the x then is less than or equal to e to the zero, which is equal to one on that interval. Okay, so we can say that so um, our remainder, our n of x here, um, would be less than or equal to our m value times x minus a, our a is 0, to the n plus 1, all over n plus 1 factorial. If I'm in this interval where x is between 0 and negative 1 half, um, the biggest that, that the absolute value of x could be is 1 half. So this is less than or equal to 1 half to the n plus 1, all over n plus 1 factorial. So the problem we've been asked to solve um, here is figuring out the smallest n that will make this quantity here um, less than 1 over 10 to the third. So we need 1 over 2 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial to be less than, let's see, it says no greater than, so less than or equal to 1 over 10 cubed. That's what we need here. Meaning I need 2 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial to be bigger than 10 cubed, bigger than 1,000. So if I do a little bit of guess and check here, looking at what the value for 2 to the n plus 1 times n plus 1 factorial is for a few values of n, I see with just plugging in 2, um, I'm going to get 8 times 6, or just 48. If we plug in um, n to be 3, um, we end up with 16 times 24, or 384. And if we plug in n equals 4, we're going to get 32 times 120, which gives me 3,840. So the smallest n that works here is 4. So we need n to be greater than or equal to 4. Need 
at least a fourth degree Taylor polynomial in order to get the approximation of e to the negative 0.5 um, within the given error.